Hey friends, it's time to do our winter pruning. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of what things look like, but before we get started, I just wanna remind you that you have to make sure that your tools are clean. Um, that's giving it a good wash with soapy water, uh, sharpen them, and also put some little oil on it so that it's easy to use and then they don't rust on you. I'm gonna add in a little clip of what I did just so that you can get an idea. focus on our dormant trees. Now as you can tell some of these don't look very dormant. That's just because we're just now getting into our really cold temperatures and it's the middle to end of January already. Um, as I'm going through some of these I'm going to adjust them. You see that pomegranate tree. I haven't fixed it and it's rubbing in against the other one so I need to add a support there. These trees have grown uh, quite a bit. These are new from last year. Um, they've already reached the top. So we're gonna cut them back about that high. These are my peaches and nectarines. One of these took a little bit longer to get started. We're gonna bring them back down a little bit more even to the bottom one. We're not gonna get it as short as this one, but just enough to give it some sun so it catches up with the rest of the trees. I know I made a mistake on these. I think I pruned um, these in the summer too far into the summer. So that's why we have this big piece up there trying to climb up there on its own. And it has a lot of new growth and it hasn't fallen. So I think um, if you go back to my summer pruning, I waited too long into the summer to prune. But we're gonna bring them back down probably right underneath that light bulb. The cherries, I didn't do much because they are more sensitive to the heat. So we're gonna cut them back down a lot. And then back here, we have our apples. We're gonna be doing the same thing to all of them. And a lot of these branches are getting very thick, so I'm definitely going to be needing my loppers. And then over here on my figs, this is the part that I really wanted to show you because when we had our freeze and our figs just died back, if we look close in here, that stump there was the entire tree. I cut it completely off. It froze. We had a really harsh freeze, about 10 degrees with snow, and that is unheard of here. And I had no idea that the fig was gonna continue to grow. So if you can tell that all of the growth is coming underneath from the roots, and so they're very, very low to the ground. We have these really long shoots, especially those in the back. We don't want the tree this tall. And as you can tell, some of these should have been gone a long time ago. So we're gonna do some heavy pruning on these trees, get them back to the size and hopefully get them to have some dormant hours. They need about six to 800 
hours and that gives it about a month or so. And if you haven't followed me, these trees have been here since 2019 and I use the high density method, which is pruning them down to a height that you can reach and only give a little bit extra for the birds to pick on. Either way, I mean, those birds, they're smart. They go, they go through all the branches. So the idea is to leave them some at the top, but they're sneaky. <laughs> This year we should have a lot more fruit, a lot more blooms, so stay tuned for that. Um, in about a month or so, these will be all blooming. trees they try to look more like a bush so you have to train it to look like a tree um, so there's a lot of crossing branches the idea is I don't want these two trees to rub too much against each other so I'm gonna clear out the middle piece and then I'm gonna go through some of the um, inside branches and see if they need to go for example right here all of this is gonna go I'll take this off this rubs everywhere and it damages the tree and exposes it to diseases and it just weakens that branch so we're going to cut all this here off and in between if anything rubs this is a good example and, and if you have watched these videos before or you've watched me prune i show you this a lot so these will rub against each other soon so we're going to take one of those off I didn't want any long lengthy branches so I cut those off and I cut them short because these are the very first branches that are going to grow very thick and and they're going to hold the weight so we want a short arm to hold all that weight. The fruit is very heavy. what I wanted now I will say that I'm not sure what's happening here if you know let me know doesn't look good makes me a little sad um, and I also cut some of the sides here because remember I want the center to be open and I want everything to kind of grow on their own side just because there's four it's a cluster of four that's what it is 
Um, and I also came in here and cut off some dead wood. So make sure you take that off as well. Now my plums and apricots are my biggest trees. So I'm definitely gonna switch over to my loppers on some of these. Um, it's a lot more work over here. different right I sacrificed a lot of the blooms so this is fruiting wood it's very different than the rest you would think that it would look stronger but this is the fruiting wood and all of these are blooms and I did that because the trees are really going to start taking its form permanent form right now and I want it to have a good structure so there's still some blooms all of this is fruiting wood all of this and I took up all the leaves because I need it to go dormant and if it has any leaves it thinks it's still fall and you know, it's soaking up some of that energy so I want it to go down to the roots let it go to sleep and hopefully it gets enough strength for this year. Moving on to the next, I'm not going to time lapse this. I'm just gonna make the cuts and then show you afterwards. And just like that, they've been cut down drastically. And I wanna show you something. My golden dorset is blooming. She is always my first one to bloom. So we have a few blooms there. I have a lot of cleaning up to do. Now the last thing we're gonna do is cut the fig tree. But before I do that, I'm gonna clean my pruners because it's time to get my very first cuttings to propagate. I'm going to try to propagate each one of these trees and I've never done it before, so hopefully it works out. <laughs> All right, this is what it's gonna look like. Hope for the best. I am gonna put them inside underneath the grow light because I've seen where that works. Now back over here. I'm going to make some really, really drastic cuts because they grow really fast and really tall. And I don't want the bigger. I want it to bush out. I want the figs to stay at arm's length. I don't want to chase none of that up there. <laughs> There it is. I have a pear back there. So it's the same height as the other one. Because there's one right there. It's supposed to pollinate each other. And then here's all my mess. And now just like that, everything is picked up. It's actually one of my favorite things to do because the trees look bare, it's like a fresh new start, and then you just can't wait for them to turn green and fill up. It's coming, the blooms are coming, so stay tuned. The next tour is gonna to be when they're blooming. So I hope you stick around. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.